One of my favorite scenes in the latest episode of Andor was Mon Mothma's discussion with her husband about his upcoming dinner party, the guests that he invited, and his attitude towards them. The first three episodes of the series were good, really good. I liked them a lot, but this show was pitched as a political thriller, and I've been hoping to get scenes exactly like the ones we got in episode four. Mothma and Luthen discussing their secret plans in back rooms, not knowing who to trust, was another favorite of mine, but the apartment scene showed us a more vulnerable side to the normally very stoic and strong Mon Mothma, but it also used Star Wars lore to drive up the tension and help lay the groundwork for some major events we might see in future episodes. We have to start by talking about Mothma's husband. She's running around trying to affect change in the galaxy. She actually wants to do some good, but the only way she can do it is behind the Imperial Senate's back. Her discussion with Luthen makes it clear she is terrified constantly. She has people following her. She thinks there are spies at the bank. She has to lie to her new driver. She can't even feel safe in her own speeder. And then she gets home and starts to shed some of that charade and the character that she has to play with the false smiles and the lies. And then we learn she can't even feel safe there, because her husband, Perrin, seems to be complacent. He has a good and easy life as a senator's husband. They're rich. They've got an absolutely beautiful apartment. He doesn't care about Mon's aspirations to actually make the galaxy a better place. I don't think he's against that idea, but it doesn't immediately affect him, and he feels zero empathy about it. And he's tired of hearing about the problems of others. He doesn't want to hear about sad stuff that gets in the way of his happiness and comfort. Sadly, I have to admit I understand where he's coming from. I think a lot of people would relate to Perrin a bit because the world has a lot of problems, and it is hard to care about all of them all the time. It's mentally and emotionally draining to hear about those problems and to work to make them better. It's far easier to give into apathy and only worry about yourself. But that's selfishness talking, the dark side. It's easier and more seductive, and the more people that give into the easier route, the more things fall out of balance. If Perrin showed her some support, she might be able to have more balance in her own life. Because self-care is important, and you do need time to relax and decompress and take care of yourself so you can then take care of others. But there needs to be a balance. Perrin wants to be happy and relaxed all the time, which means Mon Mothma gets to be relaxed none of the time. And that's just on a small scale between two people. If you're looking at an entire society like the Empire, an entire government that only cares about its own power and control, that's the kind of imbalance that leads to revolution. We're still a ways off from that in Star Wars, but there are some excellent hints for Mon Mothma's future in the rest of her conversation with Perrin. We learn that he is throwing a dinner party and he's invited people like Sly Moore and Ars Dangor, people that hate his wife and work every day to make sure all her caring and hard work achieves as little as possible. But on top of that, as someone trying to be sneaky, working with Luth and Rail behind the Empire's back, they are the last people Mothma would want in her house. Ars Dangor is the name of one of Palpatine's advisors, like the men we see with the Emperor in Return of the Jedi. But Sly Moore is the name that made me audibly go, oh no! She was Palpatine's chief of staff, who you might recognize standing at his side in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. She was there when he declared himself Emperor in the Galactic Senate. She was Force-sensitive herself and could influence the minds of others, and she fully knew that her boss was a Sith Lord. She is bad news that could spell big trouble for Mothma. And why did Perrin invite her? Because she's fun, he says. I think what he means is that she is rich and powerful and perfectly willing to ignore the quote, sad things to just talk about happy things. And Perrin just wants to be comfortable. He doesn't want to be challenged. He doesn't want to be reminded that maybe he is selfish and maybe he could get off his butt and help others find the same comfort he enjoys so much. Mothma asks him how amusing he thinks the people of Gorman would find Slymore, and holy cow, are we taking the Star Wars nerdity to another level here. Mothma says the Empire just shut down some shipping lanes and that countless people will starve there. On the surface, Gorman could just be any Star Wars planet, but it is important to the start of the Rebel Alliance. 
It was first mentioned in the Rebel Alliance sourcebook in 1990. It was the site of a massacre where Grand Moff Tarkin killed an entire group of protesters. Back then, it took place only one year after the events of Revenge of the Sith, and it prompted senators like Bail Organa and Mon Mothma to begin creating the Rebel Alliance. That's all been classified as Star Wars Legends. A canon version of the event was mentioned in the Star Wars Rebels episode Secret Cargo. According to that series, the massacre takes place three years after Episode Four of Andor and still involves the slaughter of peaceful protesters. It causes Mothma to publicly denounce Emperor Palpatine, making her an enemy of the state. She is forced to flee and is assisted by the crew of the Ghost, who take her to Dantooine, where she delivers a speech to the galaxy, rallying several rebel cells to unite and work together, marking the official start of the Rebel Alliance. Several fans have been wondering if we would see that play out in this series as well, and I now think that's far more likely. If we don't see that speech above Dantooine, we might see the Gorman Massacre and the following consequences, because the seeds have been planted. The mistreatment of Gorman could continue to be a political issue brought up in this series. It starts with the closing of trade routes and the starvation of its people, and it all leads to peaceful protests and the massacre. Considering the tone of the Andor series so far, I think it could absolutely show us what has been a key turning event in the creation of the Rebel Alliance for over 30 years. Or, you know, we might not, and that's fine. I talked about this after the first three episodes, but I still love to see Tony Gilroy weaving deep-cut Star Wars stuff into this series. I think he and the story group or the lore advisors or whoever is responsible for inserting that stuff into the scripts are all crushing it. Some might call it fan service, but it's fan service that makes complete sense for the story and doesn't come off as a wink to the audience. Personally, I do hope the series continues to build to the Gorman Massacre over the next two seasons. It seems in line with what Andor has done so far, humanizing the universe of Star Wars a bit. The Empire is obviously horrific, but so many of its atrocities, especially in live action, are shown from a distance. They're impersonal. I don't think it will or should be presented as graphically violent, but it doesn't have to be that way to be impactful. I also hope we see Sly more in episode 5 or 6, or whenever the dinner party scene will take place. She's like a dark side Mon Mothma in many ways, a character that has largely been fleshed out in books and comics, but on screen her presence has been much more limited. Seeing them verbally sparring at a dinner party sounds awesome to me. Those are the kinds of scenes I've been wanting from this series. Cassian side of the story can have the action and the combat and the blasters and TIE fighters and so on, and then Mothma's side has all the fake smiles, characters lying between their teeth, political maneuvering and all that. This second arc is shaping up to have a great balance between the two, and I can't wait to see how the rest plays out. But that's it for this video. I just wanted to talk about how much I loved that scene from episode 4 and why. Let me know your favorite scene in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel for all our Andor coverage, follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, and consider checking out our Patreon page for our video reactions and audio commentaries for every new episode, and you can check out this playlist for all our existing Andor content. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.